हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर नंद कुमार राव बवाले फ्रॉम कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग अंबाजोगाई इज गोइंग टू डील विथ अप्लाइड थर्मोडायनामिक्स वन इज आवर फिफ्टी लेक्चर इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन टू स्टीम टर्बाइन एडवांटेज ऑफ स्टीम टर्बाइन ओवर स्टीम इंजिन क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ स्टीम टर्बाइन डिफरेंस between impulse and reaction turbine that we are going to study today so this was proposed in previous lecture but we couldn't cover it in the previous lecture compounding of steam turbine velocity diagram of steam turbine so today we will discuss about work done and efficiency of steam turbine losses in steam turbine and comparison between impulse and reaction turbine so let us start with the impulse stage <coughs> work done on turbine blade and efficiency of the components for a impulse stage so power developed by the turbine is given by power developed by the turbine this is a first bit turbine is given by the work done per kg of steam that is nothing but work done per kg of steam so this is nothing but equal to the product of force in the direction of blade motion and distance traveled in the direction of the force so force into distance so force in the direction of blade motion force in the direction of blade motion and <coughs> distance traveled in the direction of force of force so this is nothing but equal to rate of change of momentum into distance traveled rate of change of momentum into distance traveled rate of change of momentum into distance traveled is given by vw1 is the velocity of wheel in one direction minus of minus vw2 velocity of wheel in opposite direction so minus of minus this becomes plus into u <coughs> So this can be written as V W one plus of V W two into U. Or this can be written as V W into U, where V W is equal to sum of velocity of wheel v w1 plus v w2 
so this is the work done in newton meter per kg of steam so if this work done is multiplied by mass flow rate the power developed we can say this like this the power developed by the turbine for a flow rate of flow rate of steam that is ms kg per second then power developed p can be given as m suffix s into v w1 plus of v w2 into u so this will be in watt so this is to be divided by 1000 then it will be in kilowatt so this is power developed by the steam turbine in terms of velocity of wheel and the velocity of blade in the direction of motion of a blade now looking at the diagram of blading efficiency number two diagram or blading efficiency blading efficiency the blading efficiency or diagram efficiency of a single blade stage of an impulse turbine is given by this is nothing but the blading or diagram efficiency of a single blade single stage of an impulse turbine which is given by blading efficiency is represented by nb and this is the ratio of work done on the blade work done on blades per kg of steam per kg of steam divided by <coughs> energy supplied per kg of steam per kg of steam so this blading efficiency work done divided by energy supplied per kg of steam so energy supplied per kg of steam is nothing but kinetic energy so work done per kg is given by vw1 plus of vw2 into u whole divided by half actually kinetic energy is given by mv square but here we are going to assume the steam mass as 1 kg so here va1 square va1 is the absolute velocity of steam at inlet therefore this can be written as 2 into vw1 plus of vw2 into u divided by va1 square so this is the blading efficiency of a turbine or diagram efficiency now coming to next bit the gross or stage efficiency gross or stage efficiency
the stage efficiency of turbine is the ratio of work done per kg of steam to theoretical enthalpy drop in the nozzle per kg of steam. <coughs> so this is defined as the efficiency of turbine the stage efficiency of turbine is the ratio of is the ratio of work done per kg of steam to the theoretical enthalpy drop in the nozzle per kg of steam. So stage efficiency <coughs> is given by work done is given by VW1 plus VW2 into U divided by asyntropic enthalpy drop delta H isentropic so how to find out isentropic enthalpy drop that we have studied in the nozzle the topic of nozzle this efficiency takes into account the losses in the nozzle also so this efficiency considers the losses in nozzle also so stage efficiency is again the product of blade efficiency into nozzle efficiency so this nozzle efficiency into blade efficiency gives us the stage efficiency nozzle efficiency already we have defined as nozzle efficiency which we have studied in the topic of nozzles so this is nothing but actual enthalpy drop in the nozzle actual enthalpy drop in nozzle to the isentropic enthalpy drop during expansion in the nozzle enthalpy drop during expansion in nozzle So this is about stage efficiency then coming to fourth bit axial thrust that is in terms of force exerted in axial direction what is this axial thrust any change in the axial component of absolute velocity of steam is always undesirable so if the force is exerted in the axial direction and that force which is exerted by the velocity component or component of absolute velocity in the axial direction which is not desirable it is undesirable and causes axial thrust on the rotor therefore provision must be made to use the thrust bearing to take this load so always the force which is exerted by steam must be in the tangential direction or in the radial direction but if the force exerted by steam is in the axial direction there will be three directions say for example if this is the turbine rotor if the force is exerted in this direction 
this is tangential force if force is exerted in this direction then it is in radial direction if the force is exerted perpendicular to the plane of this paper perpendicular or along the axis then that is known as axial thrust and if the axial thrust is exerted by the steam or absolute velocity of steam or component of absolute velocity of steam which is undesirable and that has to be balanced or that has to be counteracted by the pairings which can bear the axial thrust so therefore the axial thrust fx or fax is given by ms into vf1 velocity of flow at inlet minus velocity of flow at outlet newtons so this is the axial thrust which may act on the shaft of a turbine so this has to be tolerated or this has to be tackled by providing the thrust bearings then fifth one is the energy lost in blade passage due to friction per kg of steam energy lost in the blade passage due to friction due to friction per kg of steam this is given by vr1 square minus of vr2 square divided by 2 so energy lost in the exit per kg of steam so this is in newton meter so energy lost in exit per kg of steam lost in exit per kg of steam is equal to absolute velocity of steam at the exit divided by 2 that is nothing but kinetic energy carried by steam along with it when it comes out of this turbine so this is about the impulse stage now we will move towards a reaction turbine so reaction turbines in use are a really impulse reaction turbine so not a only reaction turbine so these turbines are impulse reaction turbine but uh, generally referred as the reaction turbine pure reaction turbines are not in general use so therefore the expansion of steam and enthalpy drop occurs both in fixed and moving blades the degree of reaction in the turbine stage is defined as the ratio of enthalpy drop over moving blades to total enthalpy drop in each stage a stage of reaction turbine and impulse turbine which are shown in figure are like this if this is the set of moving fixed blades and this is a set of moving blade as we have seen in previous lecture so this is fixed blade and this is moving blade
in both cases the degree of reaction of reaction turbine stage is given by degree of reaction of reaction turbine stage is given by r suffix d and that is nothing but delta h2 divided by delta h1 plus of delta h2 where this delta h1 and delta h2 are the enthalpy drops in fixed and moving blades fixed and moving blades of reaction turbine now the enthalpy drop through the fixed blade per kg of steam is given by enthalpy drop through the fixed blade per kg of steam is given by delta H1 which is equal to VA1 square minus VA2 square divided by 2 so this enthalpy uh, is converted into kinetic energy so initial kinetic and en final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy so that is equal to the enthalpy drop per kg of steam so actually kinetic energy is given by half m v square so m is equal to 1 v1 is velocity at inlet v2 is velocity at outlet so uh, sorry uh, v2 is velocity at outlet <coughs> so this is nothing but the enthalpy drop this must be v a2 square minus of v a1 square v a2 velocity at exit is uh, larger than velocity at inlet so that will be the enthalpy drop <coughs> then third one enthalpy drop along moving blades along the moving blade per kg of steam is given by delta H2 which is equal to VR2 square minus VR1 square divided by 2 fourth one kinetic energy supplied to moving blade per kg of steam 
supplied to turbine <coughs> that is equal to kinetic energy which is equal to 1 by 2 VA1 square plus of VR2 square minus of VR1 square then the if the friction of blade surface is neglected if the friction of blade surface is neglected we can write if the friction of blade surface is neglected then we can write it like this v r 2 square divided by 2 minus of sorry is equal to v r 1 square divided by 2 plus delta h 2 so this is the enthalpy drop in moving blades we can calculate enthalpy drop in moving blades so already we have discussed this then axial thrust on rotor per kg of steam thrust on rotor per kg of steam which is equal to EF1 minus of VF2 this is for reaction turbine so this is how we have seen the terms related to the reaction turbine now we will discuss about losses in turbine what kind of losses are going to occur in the steam turbine the causes for loss in steam turbine are just like residual velocity loss loss due to friction and turbulence then leakage loss loss due to mechanical friction and the losses due to radiation losses due to moisture so we will discuss one by one so very first loss is the residual loss residual velocity loss the steam leaves turbine with some absolute velocity then the energy loss due to absolute exit velocity of steam is equivalent to V A E square divided by 2 so steam is coming out due to at the velocity at exit or equivalent velocity that is V A E so the kinetic energy will be V A E square divided by 2 in kilojoules per kg where V A E is absolute velocity of steam leaving the turbine of steam leaving the turbine the residual velocity loss may be about 10 to 12 percent this can be in the range of 10 to 12 percent in a single stage so this is per stage 
so if there are number of stages then that will be multiplied this can be reduced by using multi stages so this can be reduced overall loss can be reduced by using multi stages and second loss is loss due to friction and turbulence so this loss due to friction and turbulence is nothing but friction loss occurs in the nozzle turbine blades between steam and rotating disc as the steam passes through nozzles then it passes through turbine blades then between the steam itself and rotating disc the friction loss in the nozzle is taken into account by introducing factor of nozzle efficiency we are going to consider this loss in the nozzle with the term of nozzle efficiency the loss due to friction and turbulence is about 10% this is about 10% then third loss is leakage loss so what is this leakage loss so leakage of steam occurs at points mentioned uh, at various points in the turbine so very first point is uh, between turbine and shaft bearings so there is a leakage between the turbine shaft turbine shaft and bearing and second one is between shaft and stationary diaphragms carrying nozzle in case of reaction turbine between the shaft and stationary diaphragm carrying nozzle in case of reaction turbine in a reaction turbine we can say in reaction turbine and third loss occurs that leakage at the blade tip in case of reaction turbine at the blade tip in case of reaction turbine and fourth one is leakage of steam through the glands leakage of steam glands or we call this as a stuffing box that you might have studied in machine drawing so this total leakage loss is about 1 to 2 percent then fourth one is loss due to mechanical friction so this loss due to mechanical friction loss due to friction between shaft and bearings comes under this category the friction between shaft and bearings is one of the major uh, cause for losses some losses occur in regulating walls so there is a friction in the walls also friction in regulating wall
is one of the loss so this friction loss can be reduced with the help of efficient lubrication so if we do proper lubrication lubrication and regular maintenance regular maintenance then this loss due to mechanical friction can be reduced then third fifth one is radiation losses so heat is lost as the steam passes through this turbine which is having very high temperature and uh, it is certain to happen in the losses by radiation so heat lost due to radiation to the surrounding as its temperature is higher than atmospheric temperature usually the turbines are well insulated to reduce this loss even though uh, this loss occurs but it is very negligible so loss due to radiation is negligible as because of due to insulation but cannot be reduced to zero then sixth loss is loss due to moisture so this loss due to moisture is as the steam passing through the last stage contains water particles as steam is expanded in multiple stages and as the expansion of steam takes place the quality of steam gets reduced and steam becomes wet and uh, contains water particle the velocity of water particles is less than that of steam velocity of water particle no water particle is is less than less than steam velocity of water particle is less than steam therefore the water particles have to be dragged along with the steam and consequently part of kinetic energy of steam is lost so this water particle which are in suspension have to be taken along with the steam and some sort of energy is consumed by these water particles to move along with the steam so that is the loss of energy to carry out these water particles which are in suspension and which formed because of expansion of steam the steam becomes wet and these water particles are going to be with the steam and those water particles have to be carried out then we'll how the comparison between impulse and reaction turbine so very first impulse turbine the pressure drop takes place in nozzle only in case of impulse turbine pressure drop takes place only in nozzle and the pressure remains constant in the moving blade this we have discussed in previous lecture so in case of reaction turbine pressure drop takes place in fixed and moving blades both and pressure drops continuously in fixed blade and moving blade then blade profile is symmetrical and so manufacturing is simple the blades of impulse turbine are of symmetrical shape this kind of shape is there that we have seen in previous class so it is symmetrical about its axis it is simple to manufacture whereas blade shape of uh, reaction turbine is of aerofoil shape so these are not symmetrical manufacturing of these blades is not so easy the blades uh, blade passage has constant cross sectional area as there is no expansion of steam in case of impulse turbine so passage between two blades is constant so cross sectional area is going to be constant as there is no pressure drop but in case of uh, this reaction turbine the passage area is going to get reduced between two blades so cross sectional area is going to reduce 
therefore the steam velocity is going to increase so this is the difference a velocity increases and pressure drop it gets reduced so in case of fixed blades the cross sectional area gets reduced in case of a reaction turbine there is a large pressure drop in nozzle the number of stages less for the same power output so all pressure drop takes place in the nozzle itself therefore less number of stages are provided in impulse turbine whereas there is a small pressure drop in each stage so pressure is not dropped in a single stage so it is uh, dropped stage by stage therefore number of stages for same power produced is more in case of a reaction turbine the blade steam speed and steam speed are large so it is expanded in a single stage or in the nozzle itself therefore the speed of steam and blade is higher whereas in case of reaction turbine blade speed and steam speed are smaller because steam is not expanded in a single stage so frictional losses are more compared to leakage losses in impulse turbine frictional losses are more compared to leakage losses but in case of reaction turbine leakage losses are more compared to frictional losses because it takes longer path and it passes through multiple stages space required for impulse turbine per kilowatt capacity is less so it occupies less space whereas reaction turbine occupies larger space for same capacity reaction impulse turbine are used for small capacity plants whereas <coughs> reaction turbines are used for medium and high capacity plants so generally reaction turbines are used in the steam power plants where large power is developed so this is how we have covered theoretical portion on the steam turbine thank you